Cheers. Cheers. Salute. Salute, Salute to BMX. You got some questions? You have questions? Oh, wow. Spring Valley or Sprung Valley? That's where I grew up as a kid. So actually we moved there, I don't know, a long time ago. Spring Valley was a place where everything happened. We rode BMX bike, we rode our dirt bikes, we skateboarded. We had a skateboard park like a mile away from the house. What's Spring Valley like? Kind of an urban community, inland, hot in the summer, fields everywhere. So as a kid growing up, it was a great place to be because we had lots of, lots of freedom. Plus the other side, our parents were never home. They were working, so I was the oldest. We kind of got to do what we wanted within reason. I'm the oldest of four kids. A brother, Ron, a brother, Scott, and my sister, Janice. We all fought like cats and dogs as kids. Now we love each other dearly. We're the best of friends. So it's all good. Sorry, friends are walking by. I'm in my hood here. When we were younger, we were more fit. My brother Scott was, uh, he was two years younger than me. I moved away for a while. And when I came back home like a year later, my brother had gone from being this little teenage kid. He just like blossomed into this studly dude. So I remember coming home one summer and all of a sudden my brother had cutest, hottest chicks I've ever seen, and they were just flocking to him. So if you had a girlfriend, she was interested in your brother. That made for some early rivalry for him and I as kids. You know, I, I think I probably can. Very well, no. You know, I used to like playing the trumpet. My siblings didn't like me playing the trumpet. Wait, we have important things coming in. Our lovely server is bringing us beverages. With a beautiful smile, look at that. <laughs> Thank you. So Mexico, I don't know, I've been going to Mexico for 40 years. First as a, as a young guy going down there, like many, you go down there for spring breaks and parties and you know, go on surf trips and things like that. Going over the border, once I get over the border, I feel free. I don't have all the restrictions that we have here in the States. My family, my dad's 100% Mexican. My mom's a good gringa. The name Haro is, is originally from Spain. There's a town of Haro in Spain. I don't know, I just have an affinity for it. I go down there, I have lots of good memories. My girlfriend lives down there. She lives in Ensenada. I'm down there every other week now. I have a house down there. Probably end up there one day. So if one day you try to get a hold of me and you can't find me, I'll be down in Baja. Oh, I write about, uh, you broke my heart, you made me cry, and uh, we should get back together again. Kind of silly stuff, but I think it's a, it's a theme that's been around for a while. I'm not political. Well, I am, but not with my music. I'll rock you to death softly. <laughs> when I got a little bit older, probably around in third grade or fourth grade, you know, I realized that my, my father was a, he was a good artist. So I would sit with him and he would show me some things and, and inspire me and kind of motivate me. He got busy as a father, two kids, he had to get a job. Being an artist, you don't make any money. I was inspired by my pops. And so I was always drawing, I was always in art classes. You know, for me, I, I feel like, yeah, I was a BMX guy, but really I was a, I'm a creative. Freestyle BMX is a really creative sport. It's kind of whatever you can come up with and your tricks and your ideas. So for me, artistically, you know, BMX was the same like me doing cartoons or illustrations or doing music. You know, you start out with nothing, and you come up with something. And so to me, they're all kind of the same, just different genres. You know, the color inspiration for our bikes in the 80s was it was inspired by what's going on in the world. Guys were surfing in neon wetsuits and polka dot shorts and, you know, lots of color, lots of graphics, you know, big hair and outfits and things like that. So I think our bikes were a little bit of a reflection of that. We would sit in the conference room in our old office and we'd make Xeroxes, Xerox pages of the bikes just in black and white on the laser printer, black and white. And we'd sit in that room and make hundreds of marker sketches of what the bikes would look like. And we'd hand draw all the bikes is how we did it back then. Then from there, we'd stick them up on the wall and then we'd see by popularity what we liked and that's how we kind of did all the bikes. It was kind of low tech, but it worked. 
I wish I had some of those comps now. I almost blew it because I wanted more money to, to ride. We weren't part of the union. We weren't Screen Actors Guild. We were, as they call them, scabs, random kids. But I asked for more money. They were gonna pay us $50 a day to ride bikes. I, I'm surprised, I'm honored. You know, I'm really honored. I'm really, I'm really thankful that, you know, the brand has, you know, has a legacy and has carried on. And I'm really happy that the products that I came up with meant so much to so many people. You know, the name's still strong because a lot of brands in business, as you know, they go out of business. It's kind of sad. I'm working on a, a little gig in August at La Bufadora down in, down in Baja. So my friend does a little Baja Fest down there. Uh, yeah, I'll probably put some new songs in there. Yeah, I got a lot of content now. I've been, I've been working hard. I've been working hard on my music. So it'll be fun because everyone else is rock and roll, and then we're gonna be the lone electronic band, all synth music, a couple of keyboards, backing tracks for all the sequence parts and stuff like that. But we have a lot of sound, it'll be good. No, dude, it's been a crazy ride. The whole BMX thing has been a crazy ride. To think 40 years later, you're still talking about it.